Welcome to Pfeiffer Vacuum. My name is Özkan Güneş and in this video we will explain the characteristics of the types of flow that occur in vacuum technology. The character of gas flow through a tube is quite different at low pressures and at high pressures. Moreover, the flow characteristics depend on the flow rate and on the geometry of the tube, pipe or channel through which the gas flows. There are three types of flow which are usually associated with vacuum technology. These are the viscous flow or continuous flow, the molecular flow and a transitional space between these two known as Knudsen flow, named after the physicist Martin Knudsen. Now let's take a closer look at the types of flow. The viscous flow can be distinguished in laminar flow and turbulent flow. In laminar flow the gas particles remain in the same displaced layers that are mostly constantly parallel to each other. If the flow velocity is increased, these layers are broken up and the fluid particles run into each other in a completely disordered way, which leads to a turbulent flow because of the vortex motion that appears in the streaming process. The boundary between these two areas of viscous flow can be expressed by the Reynolds number. Here it is important to mention that turbulent flow in a vacuum only occurs during pump down operations from atmospheric pressure or when rapid venting is carried out. In vacuum technology, the dominant flow types are the laminar part of the viscous flow, the molecular flow and the Knudsen flow. As briefly mentioned before, in the laminar flow range, the preferred speed direction for all the gas molecules will be identical to the macroscopic direction flow for the gas. This alignment inevitably results from the fact that the gas particles are densely packed and collide with each other much more frequently than with the boundary walls. Laminar flow prevails at rough vacuum. The more we pump down and reduce the pressure towards high vacuum, the more we go over to molecular flow, where intermolecular collisions are much less frequent due to the fact that we take out gas particles and that there is so much space between gas molecules. A gas particle can move in any direction in a high vacuum, and it's no longer possible to speak of flow in the macroscopic sense. To describe the flow behavior of the gas flow in these laminar and molecular flow regimes, the Knudsen number is used. The value of the Knudsen number characterizes the type of gas flow and assigns it to a particular pressure range. If the Knudsen number is between 0.01 and 0.5, this is termed Knudsen flow. Since many processes are in the medium vacuum range, this type of flow occurs quite often. At Knudsen numbers of greater than 0.5, molecular interaction virtually no longer occurs. What prevails is molecular flow. This graph shows us an overview of flow ranges as a function of the product of pressure and component diameter. Although classification into vacuum ranges purely according to the pressure is in common usage, this graph clearly shows that this classification is actually an inadmissible simplification. To sum up, the Reynolds number is useful in describing the boundary between turbulent and viscous flow. Similarly, the Knudsen number can be used to describe the boundary between laminar and molecular flow. Take a look at our know-how book to find out more about types of flow. Stay tuned for upcoming videos.